Allow yourselves to rejoice, the rebirth is upon us. My name is Rhapsody and welcome to the Binding of Isaac Rebirth. I'm just going to go straight into the game and then explain a little about it for any of you that are not familiar with it. The only character I believe that's unlocked basic should be Isaac. Excellent. Is this going to be a cutscene or no? Straight into the game. So I've been fascinated with the Binding of Isaac for a very extremely long period of time. Uh, back when the first Binding of Isaac, and I love that now I can call it the first Binding of Isaac, was released. I spent about 330 hours getting Platinum God because, well, actually, it only took me about 100 hours to get most of it. And then I had to spend 200 hours to get Dark Boy to finish off Platinum God, which was insane. The Dead Sea Scrolls mimics a random use item effect. There's, in this game, passive items, use items, trinkets, and consumables. This is a roguelike, so for anyone who's familiar with, um... This seems really weird to say, for anyone who's seen my content on a Wizard's Lizard, this is a similar game to that, because the Wizard's Liz a Wizard's Lizard is similar to this. This is what would have inspired it, and this itself is inspired by the Legend of Zelda and similar games like that. Um, I'm not gonna fight the boss yet. I've already taken damage on this floor, so... A bunch of the elements like Secret Room and that's actually it, Secret Room, are not available to me. Now, there are things in this game that I'm going to already know just from having played the base Isaac game. And there's also going to be a lot of things that I'm completely unfamiliar with. Like, this thing above us doesn't look like a shop. I'm gonna go in, just... Oh, it is a shop. Oh, man. So, here's the... This is one of the new elements in Binding of Isaac Rebirth rather than just the Binding of Isaac original game. A donation machine. And you can donate money and it unlocks items for future runs and it makes the shop better, basically. Also, there's just a bunch of new room layouts that I've never seen in my goddamn life before and I'm so fucking hyped. Oh, man. The problem that you're going to see is that I've played a lot of this game a long time ago. It would have been about a year ago that I last sat down and played this game for a- Are you a wizard? Oh, he's got the eye effect of the dude, are you a wizard? What, what? 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 Why am I shooting in- Uh-oh. Flatworm, blob blob. What's that doing for me? So that's a trinket- Is that- Yeah, that's a trinket item. Um, not sure what flatworm is doing for me. Flatworm. Hmm. Maybe it's when I kill worms, I have a chance to get a penny? Or, I don't know, or a key? Something. Oh, this is gonna be impossible with this fucking item. This item, I say. Oh, good, it ran out. Um, are you a wizard? This item. Flat worm, it looks like my tears are a little wider. Like they're flat? Is that what's going on here? Not certain. So this is one of the bosses called Larry Jr. You'd be familiar with him from the Super Meat Boy game if you played that. Otherwise, you'll become familiar with him over the course of the Let's Play because he is one of the most, or at the very least in the first game, he was one of the most common bosses you'd fight in the first two levels. Oh, so it's kind of, it's one of the very classic designs for a boss, section by section type thing. Oh wait, I should probably use this just in case it helps. Oh, okay, so that kind of mimics, I believe, the Book of Revelation, uh, which is a spacebar item that gives you a spirit heart on use. Band-Aid. That's not su a super bandage, is it? Let's check. Old bandage. Okay, so it's just uh, giving me another art container for containing my arts. Okay, so what I want to do, especially on this level, is take no red heart damage. So that means I can take as much... One of those coins. I can take as much damage as I want on those blue hearts, the spirit hearts or armor hearts or whatever you'd like to call them. Uh, just no red heart damage and I'll be able to do some better things. HP up, speed down, plus you feel strong. You feel strong. So I'm definitely feeling the speed down. Thunder thighs, I believe, is the name of the item. One HP up. So, going to that curse room below, you take damage, well, half a heart uh, on entry and half a heart on leaving. So, that removes all of my 
basically safety when I'm fighting the boss in not taking damage. So from that point on, I would have to have basically a perfect floor in order to have a very high chance of getting a Devil Room. A Devil Room uh, is a room where you can get offered special items and you can pick them up in exchange for health. Health containers, not just health itself, so it's a risky game to play. Okay, so I... The thing... Like... This, this makes everything worse. Whoa, whoa. You feel powerful. Thunder Thighs is allowing me to crush things. Ah, oh, I see what's going on here. Right. So it's like I constantly have the nail effect. I can walk through rocks. That's pretty badass. That's definitely pretty badass. Let's see what this does. Oh, shield. Please stay with me. No, it doesn't. Fuck. All right. I can take a total of one more. One more hit of damage until I need to finish the rest of the floor perfectly. Or at the very least, finish the boss perfectly. So yes, it, you aren't trading health for it, you are trading health containers. So it's a very risky way to play the game, but... That's how you play- Ugh, ah, No, don't! Fucking- God damn it, I already just took the two damage. So, there used to be a boss in this game, or there was a boss in the first. Where the fuck did I get that heart from? There was a boss in the- God damn it! There was a boss in the first called Gertie Jr. Who would do that. He would fucking run at you. And it was almost impossible to dodge. Kind of like it's proving to be now. And, yeah, but he he was a later game type thing. He wouldn't come in as early as this. He wouldn't be there on the goddamn basement. So, I need to kind of memorize new patterns to stop myself from losing... That was way too close. So when he runs at me, I want him to run across the screen so I have more time to dodge. Oh my god, thank you for the heart. Oh my god, thank you for the heart. No! Don't! Don't end my run! Fucking giant Dingleberry. I think that's actually his name. Dingle, right? Monstro's tooth has appeared in the basement. Excellent. I imagine that's for getting your first... For clearing the basement, actually, it probably is. Placenta. Regeneration plus HP up. Ah. So, is that time-based regeneration? A number of rooms completed based regeneration? Or does your health just... Ooh. Yep, it's time. Holy shit, that's actually pretty good. So, with three cents, I'll just play the slot machine, see if I can get anything better. Or I could just get my money back constantly. That's fine as well, I guess. Thank you. Finally. Oh, wait. No, I've got one. Ah, oh, I've got another one. Excellent. <sighs> oh, I, that's right. I totally forgot I can walk through, through those, but I can't walk through those. Fuck it. I have regeneration. Right? Oh, come on. So, cursed rooms can give you items, they can give you consumables, they can give you a bunch of really cool stuff, but they can also do basically fuck all for you and just screw you over. That's also a distinct possibility. God damn it. Only half a heart from all of that. I say all of that. There were four enemies. Well, five enemies in there. One of them split into two. So I still need to learn which of these are the explosive ones, which of these explode into flies. The animations are different and it's thrown me off. So I'm going to look for the secret room. The secret room tends to be nested between other rooms, so I'm going to say it's here. Whoa. Alright, I have to use E. I can't use shift to place a bomb anymore. Excellent. So the secret room just had two bombs in it. Alright. Let's just finish this up, um, see if I can blow it up if it doesn't give me anything. Blow it up if it does as well. Cool, just got my bomb back in health. Basically worth it, mostly. So we're going to be moving on to the next set of floors. Right, so it should go basement, basement, then cellar. No, not cellar. God, it's been way too long. Caves, right. Whoa, no, don't take any red hard damage on this floor if I can avoid it. Nope. Isaac seems like really glidey now. Like the controls are definitely different. He used to stop on kind of like a 
stop on a pin, right? But now he slides a little bit after you finish holding down the bar. After you finish holding down the button, and that's something I'm going to have to get used to. Just the kind of nuanced differences between this game and the last. No! No, no, no! Fuck. I thought those were centered on the Mullaboom or Mulligan or whichever of these babies it is in the center. I thought they were centered on him, but no, apparently they were just flies of their own accord, basically. So we're seeing one of the things that was teased on Edmund's blog, Edmund McMillan being the creator of Binding of Isaac. Uh, we're seeing one of the things that was teased on his blog, and that's the fact that there are rooms of different sizes rather than the just standard, look, it fits on one screen. And because of that, we saw the really cool scroll effects, which I'm super, super glad to see. That's going to take some getting used to as well, because as soon as that screen started to scroll, I was like, oh, what? Oh, this is weird feelings. Excellent. Oh, okay, so I can push the rocks in. Cool, because I deleted the rock on the other side just by walking over it, and I was hoping that that wasn't going to be constantly the case. Ooh, that's, uh, that's Daddy's Love, right? Uh, I think it's called Daddy's Long Lev, uh, Daddy's, Daddy Long Legs, and the item description is Daddy's Love, yeah. So basically, we have now a shadow following us around, which you should be able to see. Excellent, I'm just looking at the recording, you are able to see it. So it'll just follow us around, and then it'll stamp on enemies in rooms. Uh, can I actually destroy those rocks, somehow? Oh, so that's a little... That's a really cool thing. It's actually showing that I'm slowed by making my character blink. How am I supposed to get... Oh, I guess I have to have flying to get that? That's weird. So these are some of the enemies that were also kind of hinted at... Well, actually, specifically shown on Edmund's blog. Cannot remember the names for the life of me. I will at some point, however. Rusted key, it feels lucky. So let's look... It definitely... Flatworm, it definitely makes my tears look flatter. But is there any benefit for them being flatter? I'm not certain. See, when I played Binding of Isaac for the first time, I just... I just did things, right? I did things with no rhyme or reason to them, just so that I would be doing things. Fucking hell, look at my health, Jesus Christ. Touch fuzzy, get busy. Yeah, I did things with no rhyme or reason, with no clue what they were going to do. And then I eventually went to a wiki and I found out exactly what all of the items do. And then I started to try and go for like straight up optimal runs and stuff like that. But now we're back in the area where no one has any fucking clue what anything is doing. And it's excellent. I'm so confused. It's brilliant. It's like a great puzzle game for a while, up until, you know, people start breaking the game. I'm looking at you, Biz Snap and Cobalt Streak, you fuckers. Lots of love. Oh, okay, so it's like a mobile turret. That's pretty cool as well. Um, what else have we got on this floor that I want to interact with? Nothing, let's go in here. Now, I know I'm basically not using the spacebar item at all. Oh, that was really good. So I imagine the spacebar item that I got was probably something like uh, Annika's cookbook. Because it just dropped all of those bombs everywhere. Mom's heels. That's a range up. Uh, is there anything else on this map? Yes, there is. There's a gigantic room. I did quickly check out some of the controls before I began playing. Just so that I could, you know, set up the music and set up all of the sound effects and stuff so that it would be good for recording, and at the same time, so I knew what I was doing when we were playing. So I'm 13 minutes into the run right now. Thank you, little time clock thing. And I've got the curse room, which I totally missed. Oh no, I spawned in this room, so I didn't miss it, I just didn't go into it. And then I've got this room. Excellent. I think those are called psychic malls, these ones. I just remember that from the end screen of the first Binding of Isaac. Oh no. Okay, they shoot much quicker in this game than I believe they did in the first. And there's a champion version of them. The champion version... I believe these were champion versions of different enemies in the first one, so it's really interesting to see that they've developed into an enemy of themselves. Does not look like I can get over there in any fashion. I want to know what that fucking blue fire does. That looks badass. 
Uh, and I've got the health to spare to go down here. Stone chest. I imagine I probably have to blow that up to get it to- Ah, fuck! Fuck everything. I might die. Here. Ooh. What's- Goathead, he accepts your offering. What- I- What is it doing, though? The goat head accepts your offering. It's... It's beautiful and cryptic, the way in which they try and tell you, Oh, this is what this item does. It accepts your offering. I imagine half of the health that I get goes to it, and then instead of healing me, it turns into damage? That's what I'm gonna guess, because he accepts your offering, right? It's a blood sacrifice. But I could be- Whoa, that's a deal with the devil room. When the fuck did that open? I didn't think it opened while I was playing. Okay. Uh -uh. What the? No! I would have been so fine! Ah, That's really frustrating, because there were really good items in there. Well, at least I know one of them was the, uh, the pentagram, which you are able to pick up for a damage up. Oh, that's a shame. Alright, let's exit. And get back to this screen, which won't even let me continue, so that I can say that my name has been Rhapsody, the name of the game has been The Binding of Isaac Rebirth. I'm going to be explaining a little less of the kind of history of the game in the next episode, and mostly just going into this is what I'm playing, and random commentary on top of that. I'll try and be a little less analytical about it, because there are millions of people that will be incredibly analytical, analytical about this game very soon. Someone's gonna fucking break into the code, basically, and tell you what every single item does in every single run. And those people have a very specific style of commentary, which I... I can't do that. Can tell dick jokes, though. Hopefully you've been enjoying yourself, and we'll see you next time.